Talk to the people. I was going to the store for my mom's to get to get butter one day. Um and I guess like I said, this is coronavirus, so you know, you have to wear your mask and things like that. I don't really respect the whole mask thing. I'm not, I'm still not a fan of the yeah. whole mask thing. Everybody in my it's, job hate me because I always got my mask down. He would. Yeah. So, wait, what? What? No, go ahead. I want to hear it. You work in a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. fucking idiot. This ninety year old lady don't got nothing to worry about. <laughs> That's why they're mad at you. Don't worry about it, So, um, I'm still not a fan of the mask, but. Entering the, the entering the grocery store, they had a security guard. Security guard was like, you know, you got to wear a mask, but I'm already in. And he's trying to charge me for the mask. We got masks for $2. And like, now you're just looking at me as a way to make money. Right. I said, let me just go get this butter and get out. I said, I just want to go get butter. And if I can't go get the butter, can you please allow one of your employees to go get the butter for me? And I pay them, and then I can leave. Like, there's multi- multiple ways we could, we can handle this. But again, I'm still young-minded, stubborn, chest still kind of out. You know what I'm saying? I learned a lot, but I still have this arrogance about me that who are you to tell me anything? Right. I get pushed out the store. The store owner come. His sons come. And now I see a Caucasian man walk in the store with just a scarf around his mouth. So it's like, all right, I don't need a mask. I just need something to cover my face. Yeah. There's a difference. I said, so if I need something to cover my face, why didn't you just say that? I just put my hoodie over my head and I start walking in. Again, they pushed me out. Now the store owner pushed me Physically out. Physically pushing? Physically pushed me out the store and now he grabbed a crate as if he about to throw it at me. Before he, before he can even lift his arm up high enough, I punched him in his face. Punched him, the security guard now... Got me in a fiend. She's choking me out. And this is a... He's about your size, but 6'4". 5'6", 4'6", 5'. And his sons are probably your height and your your, your size. They're like, Mexican, they're, right? No, they're Spanish. Like oh. probably Dominican or, or Puerto Rican. They're your size. Four of them. So when he's putting me in the, in the chokehold, I'm like, all right, this is it. Like this is I'm just going I'm just gonna eat it because I punched him in his face. Like if I'm gonna get jumped, <laughs> I'm just gonna eat it. Like I'm just gonna eat everything it come with. But I realized he's trying to drag me inside the store. He's trying no to drag me in yeah, he's trying to drag me inside the store. Now they want me inside the store. <laughs> and as I'm getting choked out, my face is facing outside the door and I see the doors closing. Like they got you know how most grocery stores have the sensors? Yeah. It's closing in. I'm like, hold on, dog. This don't seem right. And remember, everything is processing like this, because it's happening just as fast. I'm like, hold on. They trying to drag me inside the store. And they one got me in a chokehold, one is hitting me oh, man. repetitively, and then somebody else come over the top and cut me with a machete. You get what I'm saying? So all of this is happening as I'm I'm watching the doors close in and now I'm I'm feel like I'm getting weak. I'm like, nah, dog, I can't go out like this. Yeah. <laughs> I can't go out like this. So I just drop my body weight. I lift up from him, from under him. And now I'm trying to run. So as I'm trying to run, they grab my waist. And I just held on to the doors. Feel me? So now I'm like, all right, it's a battle between me and them. Who's gonna who's gonna win? And my girlfriend at the time, she was with me. But my whole block, my face is bloody. Everyone in the neighborhood sees me. I'm like, go get my girlfriend. Go get my girlfriend. Go get my girlfriend. I'm holding on. I feel the grip loosening up. So I'm like, all right, this is my chance. So I just yank myself out the door. And I face them. And I see, this is when I actually see who was jumping me and how many of them was it. So one of the, the sons is on the phone. I'm thinking that he calling somebody else. So I snatched the phone out of his hand. And it's 911. I'm like, all right, so we will wait till the cops get here. As I got his phone, the dude with the machete come running out the store, chasing me. So I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. I'm not running home or anything like that because I got his phone. I want them to think no, that I'm stealing, you know what I'm saying? And I'm running, bro, and I'm facing him up, shaking, shake. you know what I'm saying? All fast, yeah, man. all happening fast. The other brothers is throwing trash at me, trying to trip me up as I'm running, like... I'm in, and this is all in the middle of the street. You know what, what I'm saying? What time of day is this? It's like twelve o'clock in the afternoon. afternoon. Wow. You oh, get what I'm saying? Oh, so broad daylight. Yeah, broad broad daylight. And so then my girlfriend eventually come and the dude with the machete, 
she approached the dude with the machete and she's like, oh, da, da, da. I'm like, what are you doing? You got a machete. You shut up. Like, you back up. What are you doing? You get what I'm saying? But females always... Girls don't give a fuck. Bro. Protect us though, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, but, and that's why... That, that goes into legit training later on. But mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, what are you doing? Let's like, And then the dude with the machete is like, yo, I, I, I got the machete in my face. And because now like, I can't leave because she's here arguing with him. I can't leave. I can't go nowhere. Do with the machete. But he's not going to do anything now because there's so many people. The cops arrive. Arresting me. Arresting me. You get what I'm saying? At bloody, a, a, at bloody everything. Arresting me. Bashed my head into the wall. Just threw me into the car. It, like, just straight mistreated me from beginning to end. And I feel like this fight was just a long fight, a physical fight. And then it turned into a mental fight because I was sitting in the precinct. And I just beat a case. Like, I just beat a charge. Wow. Like, probably three days before that. Oh, man. And so to find myself back in a situation, like, yo, now I'm starting to think, like, yo, God, like, what's going on? Like, the enemy plan, I have dreams about getting arrested in cops often. So I feel like, I really feel like my, the enemy goal for me is, like, to just be locked up or in prison. Because that's the only way you can stop someone that's creative as me, is try to close them up and put them in a box. So I'm in there and and now I don't get home until four o'clock that morning. So and how I got home, I had to jog because no bus, no cabs, no anything. And I was asking myself why I'm jogging so much, why I'm running three miles a day. But I had to run run five miles all the way home. You know what I'm saying? So that whole six months of training was prepping me for that day. Wow. For that short amount of time, that physical fight and that mental fight, which was the longest time. And that's when legit training became a thing and stay ready became a thing. Stay because ready. If I wasn't ready, I would, could have been dead because that was a cartel. Hey man, I was I was Definitely. telling you right now, I'm fat. If that was me in that position, <laughs> nigga, it was quiet. <laughs> wow. The Mexicans was catching up to me. That's a wild story right yeah, there, man. So that's when legit training came a thing. And because I caught that, because I'm facing another charge. I can't get no job. I was on the verge of trying to look for a job. And again, I can't find no job. But what we just said when in the beginning, society had this thing about nine to five whereas is making people seem like that's the easiest way out. Just getting a job. It was fix all your solutions, all your problems. No. That's the hardest. You can't even get a job. And I, now I can't even get a job. So it's forcing me to now provide.